Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number 50 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is visualization. Our quote of the day comes to us from Ray Floyd. Visualization, it may be the most important part of your mental package. I'm beyond excited to bring you today's episode, which happens to be a very special moment for the No Quit Living Podcast, as today's show marks our 50th episode. Last week, we also passed over 38,000 total downloads. We would like to say a very special thank you to our listeners. As we're always looking to increase the reach of our audience and the people we can positively impact, we would love it if you could please subscribe to our show, as well as give us a five-star rating. Our guest today is quite an interesting individual. As a former professional athlete, entrepreneur, and a successful podcast host, he truly lives the no-quit lifestyle. The mission behind both his company as well as his new podcast is to help inspire the next great entrepreneur. It is my honor to introduce my friend, Colin Morgan. Colin, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living Podcast. Yeah, great having me here. This is awesome. I appreciate it. First question we ask everybody is, are you ready to make it happen today? I'm always ready to make it happen, Chris. Awesome. I knew you, I knew <laughs> you would respond that way. <laughs> So as we always look to motivate and inspire our listeners, I was curious if you have either a story about perseverance or perhaps a challenging time that tested you where you kept on going and never quit. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll provide a little bit of context to this story. Um, I grew up in an amazing, loving, I had such a supportive family. I really had all the support in the world. My childhood was you know, honestly pretty perfect. I was a, I was a star athlete. I had a lot going for me, but something happened in my young adult life. I met someone who had a major influence over me and I was abused both mentally and physically, um, so to say, for about two years. And now, wow, how does an athletic, popular, strong-minded person have something like that happen? And for a long time, that's what I thought. And I really hit it. I, I didn't tell anyone. I made up new events in my head and I tried to conjure up even a new story. And I was really hiding the, the true issue that was in play there. And now this affected everything. This affected my relationships, um, my golf game, which I turned professional a short time after. I developed a small gambling addiction. I was drinking too much. I was just in a really bad place. You know, food didn't taste the same. I was really unhappy and not the same person that, you know, I grew up when I grew up that I was. And this led over to my working life as well. I mean, I quit golf. I jumped around in different jobs. I was unhappy with everything. And it really wasn't until recently where I was able to fully recover and 100% accept and own what had happened. And it took me being okay with what went on and you know, sitting down and talking with someone about it and really working tirelessly to get over that. And now I can say that I have. I'm the happiest I've been. I really do what I love. I live life to the fullest. I have an amazing support system around me, girlfriend who's super loving, and I'm an uncle to four kids now just recently, so that's some great news. And I'm really just happy with where I am and most importantly, who I am. That's an interesting backstory, and I appreciate your candor and sharing that with us. How long were you a professional golfer? I did so for about three years. So after college, I I turned professional. I played around North America. I spent some time in Florida, Arizona, and then obviously where I am from here in Ontario, Canada. You know, you touched on something interesting is you you finally accepted it and you became okay with it. And I don't want to say in any way, shape, or form I can understand exactly what you're going through or what you went through. But one thing I do know is that it comes to a point in life, whether it's abuse, whether it's physical, mental, it could be failure in business, could be failure in life, is you have to get to the point where you accept whatever has happened to be able to move on. And obviously, you've spoken to people and you've done it. And clearly, today, you're in a much better frame of mind. But I think directly and indirectly, it probably had a profound impact in making you the person you are today. And I think 
what we talk about a lot on our podcast is everybody gets hit with different obstacles. There's yeah. no there's no question you're going to get knocked down. It's not the question of whether you get knocked down. The question is whether you get back up. So I just want to want to commend you for for that. And obviously you've put in time and and years and probably blood and sweat into getting to where you are today. But I know you're you're doing a great job. Your your podcast is just coming out soon. You're you're killing it in that world. And I think indirectly and directly, your past has probably helped build you into the person you are today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's so true. I mean, for a lot of times, you know, even to go a little bit further, I I always had the mentality of, you know, why me? Why did this happen to me? How could this happen to me? And it wasn't until I was working with someone and she had just said bluntly after she said, you know, Colin, why not you? And something just clicked in my head. It made so much sense for me as, you know, why not me? I'm able to handle this situation. It's better me than someone else because I have the tools and support system to get through this. And, you know, that was just a real turning point in in really accepting what had happened for sure. I can't tell you what it's like to be a professional golfer because I have a <laughs> horrendous golf game. But I, But I was curious. I'm sure there's some similarities or overlap in being a successful professional golfer as well as being a successful entrepreneur. I was curious if you could briefly touch on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, just a professional athlete in general, they have such a drive and commitment to what they're doing. And when I was golfing, you know, I woke up early. I made sure that my physical fitness was in peak condition. Mentally, I was in a good state. I practiced every single day and I was just getting better at at my, at my golf game every single day to be prepared for that tournament. And I've really translated that into my business life to be able to say the same thing. You know, as an athlete, you work on your game every day on, as a business owner, I have to work on myself every day to make sure that my business is improving. And I'm, you know, making sure that my customer experience is the best that it can possibly be. So really, uh, being a professional athlete and being a business owner, really ties into each other. It's really the same thing. A, a professional golfer is essentially an entrepreneur. Yeah, no, you're you're an entrepreneur with, with a golf club. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, there's no set contracts, right? You have to go out and you have to perform. And if you don't perform, you don't get paid. No, that's probably the best part about golf is, as you know, it's 18 holes and you could have the best second, third, and fourth hole, and all of a sudden you could just have a horrendous fifth hole, and the, and the <laughs> best and the best part of it is you know you have the sixth hole coming up, so the exactly. question is, and it's just like business, where you might have a good two or three days, and all of a sudden a, a tough deal that doesn't go your way, but you got to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's days where you shoot, you know, six under par, and there's days you shoot 16 over par, but guess what? There's a new day ahead of you, so... <laughs> Um, I will have to disagree. I, there's never been a day where I shot six under par, so I, <laughs> I'll have to take your word for that. Okay. So many of our listeners, Colin, are into personal development and improving different areas of their life. I was curious if you have a favorite book or perhaps you've read something recently that you'd like to share or recommend to our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. I have a couple. So one being the secret, I'm a big believer in in visualizing something and, and making it happen. Now, a lot of people read that book and you know follow the steps and they think, hey, I got a vision board. I'm going to be rich. Right. But that book really gives you and teaches you the key principles to do what you do. But it's you who has to put that into action and make it happen. And my father always told me that it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in something. So you might as well get started now. And I've always taken them at that mentality going forward where I have to put in my time to become an expert in something. But if I can continue to visualize where I want to be, it makes it so much easier for me to do that. You know, it's interesting that you touch on that because I'm, I'm a big fan of the book, The Secret and the Power. And I think one of the things that there's a disconnect is people talk about the law of attraction, and I think it has a, has a little bit of the fluffiness to it of the self-help concept where, for example, you wake up in the morning and you say, okay, I'm going to be crazy successful and I'm going to be a millionaire. Obviously, it's better to say that than to say the opposite, but, yeah, you, for sure. but you touched on something is you have to take action. And Jeff, Jeff Woods, who was on our podcast uh, probably 10 episodes ago, he's, he's the host of the, the One Thing podcast, which is a top-rated business podcast, yeah. and he's incredibly successful. And he said something that I've literally repeated probably 100 times is, you can have the best content, but if you don't put it into action, it's meaningless. And I think most people don't realize that you need to put yourself in the right frame of mind. You need to put the right things in your mind and in front of your eyes. But at the end of the day, in the beginning of every day, you still need to take action. I think that's where, unfortunately, a lot of people miss the boat in regards to not only mentally putting yourself there, believing in the law of attraction, but you need to go out and actually put things in action and put the work as well. So true. I couldn't agree more. 
One of the things we do in each of our shows is we utilize a daily quote. I was curious if you have a favorite quote. Yeah, I mean, I have a couple different quotes. Um, one quote that I just, I love, and you know, this is even from a book that I've read from S Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's not a direct quote from that. I'm not even sure who said it, but it's, you know, good artists copy, great artists steal. And I've always just loved that. And for me, it means why not try to reinvent the wheel, just like you had said earlier in the show. It's been done before, you know, figure out how they did it, make it your own and do it yourself. So everything, when I'm trying to do something in my business or I'm trying to provide, you know, uh, something new for my customers and clients, I always think of that. I look at someone who's done it before and then I go ahead and I make it my own. So, you know, good artist copy, great artist steal. That's uh, that's definitely a quote that I live by. That's so funny that you say that because I always tell people all the time is when you're looking to be successful in any area of life is don't try to recreate the wheel in the sense of doing everything on your own is look at the people or the businesses or the people that have come before you and been successful and copy, paste. And I, I think there's not a lot of people that can literally say that they create their, <laughs> all of their content 100% by themselves. And I think some of the most successful people in all walks of life have definitely had different mentors or people that have helped them or people that they've followed along the way. Because at the end of the day, don't try to recreate the wheel 100% on your own. Obviously, you want to add your own spin to it and add your own flavor to it. But look at the people that have been successful in front of you and try to duplicate what they've done and vice versa. Look at the people in front of you that have failed or hit their head against the wall and don't follow them in that regard. Absolutely. For sure. As we all know, Colin, life is incredibly challenging. I was curious what motivates and drives you to keep going every single day. Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, I, I asked a very similar question in my podcast. And for me, what motivates me is I always take time out, no matter if it's in the morning, afternoon and night, and I visualize where I want to be in my life. I visualize, you know, what car I want to drive, what house, you know, but more than that, I visualize, you know, having a great relationship with, you know, my soon to be with a with a wife or with my family. I visualize you know, everything exciting happening in my life. I feel, you know, what that looks like and what that smells like. And what comes from that is such a clear vision and it's so motivating. And, you know, for me, I have to know why I'm doing something in order to do it. And it just gives me such a, a, a much stronger self-belief in my in myself to actually go and move forward. And, you know, even I hear from people around me or my friends and they're like, you know, how cool would it be to, you know, be that rich or be that successful or be the best in that field? And for me, I would honestly feel the same. And it's not like I am the most successful and it's not like I have the most amount of money, but I visual visualize myself there. So I've already seen myself, you know, be that person. It's already in place. And it, like I said, it's not like I'm there, but I believe it. And that's what's most important. I'm so glad you touched on that because that's something that I think so many successful people do, whether it's writing down their goals every day or writing them down and visualizing them. But there are so many people that talk about you need to have a vision of your goal, whether it's a business, a house, a relationship. Absolutely. And I think the the reality also to that is that's, a, that's the best starting point, but then you need to go ahead and put the action in and you need to put the hours in and make the effort. So I think I'm glad you shared that because I think a lot of people – I don't want to say miss the boat per se, but miss the boat in the sense that it's not just a visualization component. You need to also put action behind it as well. Oh, couldn't, couldn't be more true. I mean, the visualization component is, is just a part of what you have to do. You have to do that every single day. And something that I do every morning to make sure that I do reach my goals is I like to schedule out my day. I look at what I have to accomplish and I set times for it. So I have to first understand when I'm most productive. And then that is sort of the time where I put my creative content there. And then I just schedule my day around that, you know, 30 minutes, 30 minute incre increments for me is when I work the best. So that's how I schedule out my day from, you know, me waking up at 7 a.m. to me finishing at whatever time I, I finish at. You know, you beat me to the the test I was about to ask. <laughs> the next question I ask is, do you have a specific morning ritual? And one of the things that we're launching in the next couple of weeks is we're launching a no quit living accountability planner. And one of the things we talk about often is you want to prepare and plan your day the night before. So yeah, when you absolutely. wake up, whether it's at the office or your job or in your home, is you start the next day with a with a plan. And I think it's, it's so important also then the night before is to kind of recap your day. So I'm glad that you talked about scheduling things out because I think it's a really important part to be successful in all walks of life. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, even putting on to that, something else I do in the morning, which I feel like is very important, is I really take time out to look at where I am and be thankful for where I am and what I have. And I think that uh, too many of us take for granted what you have and aren't happy with your current situation. If you can just take that time out and look and say, wow, like, look where I am today. It, it really is powerful and will motivate you every single day. No, I think that's that's awesome. And it's, it's so important to be grateful. And a lot of different people that have been on my show have talked about something along the lines of a of a gratitude walk in the morning or listing mm-hmm. listing the things that they're grateful. And I forget who said it, but somebody said, you can't make a list of all the things you're grateful for and be in a bad mood. And it just literally yeah. <laughs> it literally hit me is and it's something that I try to do every single day is is really take some time and say, you know what? I do have a lot to be grateful for. Is everything perfect? Of course not. But there's so much more to be grateful for than people I think a lot of times remember. And that's why it's important to take some time out each day and either write it down or just visualize all the amazing things that we all have going on in our lives. For sure. I wanted to ask you if you could just touch on a little bit. You're launching your podcast coming up soon, and I think it's going to be a huge success. So I wanted to just ask you if you could briefly share and touch on that for a little bit for our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. And uh, yeah, this podcast is called The Daily Grand Podcast. It's going to be airing November 1st. I have some great guests who are going to be on the show like Chris here. I'm super excited to uh, to be able to join me on. Um, this is a podcast that's going to run every single week. Um, it'll be four to five episodes a week. And I'll be interviewing successful business owners and people. And my real vision for this is I really hope to inspire the next great entrepreneur. If if I can be a mentor to someone or if someone else on my show can can give that help to someone who's just getting started out or or like Chris says, who who is about to quit, to be able to help them in what they're doing and really push them to go forward and become great and the person that they were supposed to be, that really drives me and that's really why I started the Daily Grind podcast, which I'm super excited about uh, to be launching. I think it's going to be a huge success and, and I just need to touch on, I think episode six probably might be the best one yet. I think so too. I think so. <laughs> People got to tune in, but it's going to be a good one. <laughs> so here's an interesting question. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. Um, there's probably a lot of people, but to be honest, I would say it would be my grandfather. His name was Ted Morgan. He fought in the army. He was from the UK in the second world war. He was a fighter pilot. He just had such an amazing story, um, in his, I'm not too sure if it's a platoon or what it's called in the air, but there was 42 people, um, that were in his unit and he was the only person out of that unit to survive. And he was able to take him and his wife and, you know, move from the UK to Canada. And he actually built a property that my parents live on that used to be a potato farm. And he planted every single tree. I think there's about 42 to 52,000 trees on this whole property and planted them all by hand. And he, uh, he, he's just such an inspiring guy. He was a teacher afterwards. He wrote a book and, uh, just being able to get a little bit more time with him as I was, uh, probably pretty young when he passed away, just having that time and just conversing with him, even for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, that would be someone that I would, uh, you know, something I would always love to do. How many trees did you say he planted by hand? It was 42 or 52. Th- I don't know the exact amount, but it's something crazy. It's, it's the craziest number I've ever heard. <laughs> Let's play the low end and say 42,000. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of people that in their lifetime could say they've done anything 42,000 times. So that's that's pretty amazing in many ways. And he sounds like like quite an interesting guy. And being the only survivor, obviously, that talks about his tenacity and his perseverance. Uh, he's such an amazing guy and he was so giving with everything that he did um, which was so inspiring he had a lot but he always took time and he gave to people he had people over and he listened to them he talked with them he kept in touch and it's just something that I hope that I can take with me going forward no you definitely have that that attribute and I think it's amazing and and it's always really neat and inspiring when you meet people that have been successful in different walks of life but they still take time out to listen to others and to talk to others so he definitely sounds like a uh, quite an interesting guy, not only from the from the war and the planning, but also just the mentally what you've taken from him and his attitude helping others. So before we let you go, Colin, I wanted to ask if you have some parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. Yeah, you know, uh, since this is the No Quit Living podcast, this is a message to people who are out there who are thinking of quitting. Maybe they're lost. Maybe they're in a similar situation that I was in. And just know that 
there are so many good people out there who are there to support you and help you through it. You just have to be willing to open up yourself and open up your mind to allowing those people into your life. And I know that sometimes you feel trapped and like you're in this, you know, spinning cycle that you're never going to get out of. But if you're able to let people in, accept what happened, really take take ownership of what you're doing, it's going to allow you to not only push forward, but do things that you never thought you were able to do or never dreamed you were able to do. So that's really a parting message to to everyone out there who's listening is, is don't give up, have that no quit attitude and, and keep pushing and persisting and, and pursuing for more. That's some good parting words. And last question, Colin, I promise it's the easiest one. What's the best way for our listeners to either follow you or connect with you? Absolutely. So uh, I'll provide Chris with all my social media links so you can keep up to date on what's going on. I'll also give you my personal email address um, if you had any questions. And uh, also for everyone on the listener, we created a business plan mastery program for our, our company here, Plan to Profit. And uh, it's a program that we're going to be launching soon for roughly, you know, 600 to 1,000 bucks. And I want to be able to offer this to everyone on your podcast for absolutely free of charge um, for thank you for coming on the show. No, I truly appreciate not only your time, but sharing what you've shared with us. You've given us some great insight. And I think I would highly recommend November 1st for our listeners to check out your podcast. I think it's going to be a huge success. So, Colin, thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. To sum up today's episode in our theme of the day, visualization, Colin practices what he preaches. Throughout his tough young life, Colin battled many challenges from mental and physical abuse, drinking and gambling. Colin had many reasons not to succeed. However, Colin accepted his past and he moved on to his future. He shared some great stuff with us regarding the importance of working on yourself every single day. He also touched upon the importance of both visualizing yourself succeeding every day as well as the importance behind planning and scheduling out each and every single day. In his parting words, Colin shared two great things with us. He spoke about how and why it is so important to let people into your life, as well as the importance of letting them help you. He also touched upon our favorite subject, which is to never quit. So for today's call to action, our question is very simple. Who can you let in your life to help you, and whose life should you enter to help them? Never give up on yourself or others, and always be willing to help someone else. We hope today's episode inspired you and motivated you to keep going for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.